Hi and welcome back to our last week of this uh, seven week course looking at the life of Jesus and how we can learn from Jesus how to become like Jesus. So we've looked at an interactive relationship with Jesus in prayer and we've looked at a, a, a relationship with Jesus where he um, leads us into holiness and into the, the fullness of being of having life integrity and free from sin. We've looked at uh, um, also the Holy Spirit and how the Holy Spirit fills us, infuses us, transforms us um, and again gives us that deep relationship with Jesus. We've looked at the evangelical stream, rooting ourselves in the Word of God, in Jesus, and proclaiming and evangelizing. And then we also looked at last week the compassionate stream, where we engage in social justice, where we look at the way that um, Jesus reached with the last, least, and lost around him. So this last week um, is the week that we call the incarnational stream, or the kind of whole life, um, uh, whole of life. Um, and the reason we look at this is that um, uh, we are sentient beings. We are humans that that learn things or pick things up with our senses. So, you know, we can see and we can taste and we can touch the material world. You know, we're hungry and so we eat food. We're cold and we put on clothes and that sort of thing. But when we start talking about spiritual things like what's going on inside us or um, engaging with the Holy Spirit that we can't see, for example, sometimes what we do is we separate our... Um, our spiritual engagement with the physical engagement. What this also just breeds us into is thinking that church is this kind of spiritual thing that we do over here, but then I lead and live the rest of my life. This kind of split in our life, we see this split happen in the church all the time. People go to church, they act a certain way, and then on Monday they don't look like Christians. You know, we have people, I know people who say, oh, I didn't realize that guy was a Christian or whatever it is. And, and therefore somehow um, we've just separated um, God from engaging with the whole of our life. And we want a God bathed life. We want a life that is immersed in God. When we see that in Jesus, we see that in everything he did, he was interacting with the Father. Everything he did was in the power of the Spirit. It's really interesting that Jesus' ministry begins when he's 30. I don't know if you've thought about those first 30 years of Jesus' life. I, I'm sure you have, like me, wondered what was he doing? I mean, he probably was a carpenter picking up his father's trade and probably engaged in that. What did it look like for him to have such a deep relationship as a carpenter that meant when he came to being a rabbi at 30, he was the most powerful and impacting rabbi that has ever existed? How did this God as a human do that? How did he let that infiltrate everything? A passage we're going to look at today also highlights this kind of dichotomy, this issue that we've got. Um, and this is the story where they're in the synagogue and a woman walks into the synagogue. Now, a woman walking into the area where the men are in most of the synagogues, um, in most of the cities, not in every place, but most of them, the men and the women were separate. So for a woman to walk in is an absolute um, a bizarre situation. And she comes in to receive healing, not only on a Sabbath day, but in the middle of worship. It'd be like in the middle of our church service, in the middle of liturgy, kids are running around or breaking into that, or somebody's distracting something. In that moment, we have an option to either allow God to bathe every part of our life, or we have an option like the Pharisees tried to do, which is to cut off and say, you can't be healed on this day, or you mustn't be part of here, we need to separate you off, because we've got a holy time, and then we'll engage with you later. But what Jesus does is starkly different. What Jesus does is he speaks to the woman, he engages with the woman, and he heals the woman. Because God is to be part of every part of our existence. We want God to bathe our thought life. We want God to bathe our emotions, but we also want God to help us orientate how we spend our money. We want, to, we want God to impact the way, um, the, the type of job that we do and the way that we do our job, the way that we parent or the way that we are parented, the way that we engage with our friends. All of that we want to be God bathed. And that is what Jesus did when God himself became incarnate and became a baby and lived among us. That's what we're invited into. And I hope you really enjoy having discussions around that today and bless you as you seek to try to do that this week.